We are live. Hello, everybody. Just going to check quickly to make sure that I am live and connected in all of the places. We are actually streaming in three different places right now on my business page, well, my author page, in the group, and also on YouTube. So on my YouTube channel, right? <laughs> so we're going to get this message all the way out. <laughs> yes, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. I see we have two viewers so far. If you are hearing us clearly, let us know. Drop a one, drop a yes in the comments. You guys know I like interactions. So let us know that you're hearing us clearly. Marshawn and I are ready. I have some questions queued up for Marshawn. So yeah, we gonna, we gonna hit it off straight away. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, I just wanna make sure everybody's hearing me. Let me just make sure the audio is on in the group. Give me one second. Because we know how technology can be. Mm -hmm. If you're viewing us right now, say hi so I can know that you're hearing us. Sure, everybody's hearing me. Let me just, oh, yeah, they're hearing. <laughs> Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay, I see a like. Thank you, Glenn, for liking. I see your like. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so we're using StreamYard tonight, and there is a link above the video. Um, that you need to click to give StreamYard permission to share your name because this is how the message is showing up. It's just saying Facebook user. All right. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tonight, I have with me the lovely Marshawn, relationship strategist, who is going to give us some knowledge, give us some information on how we can get it and keep it right. Hi, Saren. Thank you so much for joining Hi, everybody. Okay, people are coming in. Thank you guys so much for joining. Perlette, Francesca. All right. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining and gentlemen as well. It is so nice to have you here with us tonight, Marshawn. Now, Marshawn and I have a little history. Marshawn and I first met because of our passion for self publishing, right? Because we wanted to publish our own books. So we met in this group where um, we got quite a bit of information that made us very successful in the self-publishing niche, right? Yes. And then we went on and we did some work together, which was really, 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 really good. Okay. <laughs> Can I say really one more time? One more time. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> really, really good. And what I learned from Marshawn is that sometimes when it comes to relationships on a whole, not just business and relationship, but relationships on a whole is that we have to get ourselves together because a lot of times we think it's the other person that needs to be, needs to be pulled up, right? So quick and early, I learned that it's not only about the other person, but we need to take a step back and look at how we deal with things and how we process things and our expectations and stuff. But anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take it away. <laughs> Go run it down, run it down. <laughs> I'm not gonna take it away. But um, it is really, really nice to have you here on my platform. <laughs> when we met, I didn't have a platform. And you can share with us as business persons how we can keep that balance between our relationship and our business and get it all together. All right. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself and take it away. I have some questions, but then we'll get into the questions. I just want to let the audience know if you ladies, if you gentlemen have any questions, you can drop it in the comments so we can definitely discuss them for the short time that we will be together tonight. All right. If you're still with me, drop a one so we know that you're here, you're listening, you're, you're ready for the information so that we can definitely get it on. All right, Marshawn, take it away. Well, hello, beautiful people. Thank you so much, Anisha, for ha having me on your platform. Um, as she just introduced you, introduced me. <laughs> I am Marshawn O, and I am a relationship strategist, and I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift them to feeling hurt, understood, and appreciated. And I've been working in this line of work um, 
for as long as I can remember, but I'm certified. I got certified three years ago, but I've been working in this industry for many years before I took it seriously. All right. So we have an expert in the mix and now is the time to ask the questions. I mean, we won't get answers if we don't ask the questions. Okay. I see quite a bit of persons that are Facebook users. Um, there is a link at the top of the broadcast. All you need to do is click that link to give StreamYard permission to show us your name and we can address you by your name. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. All right. So there are some misconceptions, mm -hmm. I would say, that um, we can't have it all. We can't have that balance where you, your wife, your girlfriend, your mother, father, because I know there's a gentleman that <laughs> lets me know that he's here tonight. Thank you okay. so much for joining. <laughs> and business and everything functions nicely, neatly. So give us, give us some information of, on how we can strike that balance, if at all we can strike a balance in such in such a way. Well, okay, so the balance can can be tough. It can be hard. But it, and and especially if you don't have the village around you, right? Mm -hmm. The village and the support. So the village and the support are key to the balance. Mm -hmm. However, if you are a single parent, mother or father, doesn't matter. You pretty much you just got to do the best that you can do. Right. And and when you're in whatever space you're in, be there, be present, show up there. So if you're with your children, be with your children. Don't don't as much as possible, because I know I was about to say about this, about, about this little device right here, cell phone. Um, <laughs> as much as possible, <laughs> be present in every situation that you're in, because your children are not going to understand, especially if they're small, they're not going to understand that you're trying to make money 24 seven, even though that's right. what we all trying to do. They're not going right. to understand that. What they're going to understand is that your business was more important than he or she. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you're with your child, be with your child. Like same thing with your spouse. When you're with your spouse, be with your spouse. And then when you're with your business, be at your business. Right. Because some people, have a tendency to when you're at your business, you're thinking about your family. And then with your family, you're at, you're at your business. So right. present. And so the balance literally just comes from, it's not about how much time, right? It's about the quality of the time that you're spending with your child or with your spouse, right? And, and with your business, to be quite frank. So it's the quality of time that you are spending, the quality of time. So that, okay. that literally is the balance. Okay, so there's a time that we need to turn off the phone, especially when we're the family, when we're with the, the children, mm -hmm. the spouse, we need to put the phone down, put it aside and give them our undivided attention. Absolutely. Right, and then now when it comes to the business aspect, then you know we allot time. This is what I'm getting from what you're saying. We mm -hmm. make sure we have allotted time for business so that we focus solely on business. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. 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 We're gonna get it right. We're definitely gonna get it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Anisha, it really is a practice. That's what people don't understand because we're kind of we're trying to be too many places at one time, and then your right. mind is somewhere else when you're physically, your body physically is one place. So it's a practice, you practicing being 100% with your child, you practicing being 100% with your spouse and the family together, right? And of course, it's really easy to be 100% in your business because we're all thinking about the money aspect. Right. But we really have to realize that, of course, money isn't everything. We know that we need it to survive and thrive, et cetera. But what if you gain all of this money mm. and have nobody to share it with? Your right. children now hate you. Your spouse hates you, whether your girlfriend, boyfriend, fiance, um, husband and wife, right? You can't get along. Y'all only getting along when you're giving something monetary mm -hmm. value or going right. on a vacation, but you're not right. really connecting the way that you should, right? So wherever you're at, 
be there. All right. Okay. Another question. What if there is no support from your partner? Now you're trying to get that business going. I mean, as business people, whether you're just starting or, you know, you're, you're still, you know, in your teething stages, we all know that it's a process. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. It just takes a lot, right? Huh? So um, you're thinking, okay, I'm not getting the support that I want from my spouse. How would you suggest dealing with stuff like that? Perfect question. Thank you for it. What I have to say to this and what I tell my business, my beautiful business people that I work with, the dream, the vision was given to you. So right. in order for you to thrive in your business, you have to stay the course because as I, as I mentioned, I help Christians. So now I got to bring in my Christianity right here. So the, your God given path was given to you. It wasn't given to your spouse. Now, am I saying mm -hmm. leave your spouse behind? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. What I am saying is in order for you to fulfill your God given purpose, you must continue to make steps to move toward where you're supposed to go. And so with what that actually looks like, I'm not getting support from my husband. Let's say, for instance, this is me. I'm not getting support from my husband. So what I need to do in order to still continue to press forward, as well as keep some peace in my household, I now have to find time for me to work on my business. So what does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? That means you may have to lose sleep. Mm. So. <laughs> you may have to <laughs> yes 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 you're not the only one so you're making a noise i can't hear everybody else but they're probably making noise too <laughs> if you want your business to thrive because most of the time the spouse is not supporting you because they can't see the funds yet mm. all this time and energy that you're putting into this side hustle this little business that's when people try right. to throw shade on you when they call it little <laughs> so when you're spending all this time with your little business and does not see the fruits of your labor as of yet, but that right. does not mean that you need to stop your labor because again, the vision was given to you. It wasn't given to your spouse. So your right. spouse is not able to see what God placed inside of you. And so you must get it out there. So what I was doing, and at the time, me and my me and my now husband, we were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. But he was he was like mm, this relationship, like, and and a lot of it has to do with cultural differences. But I won't go into that. But um, he all, he didn't see the fruits of my labor. Now, several years later, because I stayed the course, right? Like, you make things happen. You got money coming from here, money coming from here. It's because now he can see it. Before right. he could see it. But if I stopped my God-given path, then everything would be out of whack anyway. I would be miserable. I would be sad. I would be angry. I would take it out on him, maybe even take it out on our daughter, daughter as well as people around me. So the, the, the vision was given to you, sis. The vision was given to you, bruh. You must find time to work on it, even if it is one thing to move your business forward every single day. So that's seven things in one week. It's 28 things, right? In, in a month, it's 365 things that you can do every single day for a year to move your business forward. The vision was given to you, so you have to walk and find time to do it. And most of the time, that is when you're losing. If you want it, if you want it, you'll do it. <laughs> right. All right. Um, that kind of covers another question that I got sent to me. Um, what if your partner does not share your enthusiasm and excitement for your business or passion? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you want to add anything because you kind of covered that because, of course, they're not seeing the fruits early out. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But then after, once they start seeing it, then based on what you're saying. You know, they're all in it. They, they're that's gonna be going. your biggest cheerleader. They're gonna be talking about how they how they can spend the money because now it's gonna be y'all money. <laughs> now it's gonna be y'all money, which it should. I'm not knocking that, but before right, right. it was like your little business, your little this, that, that, because there's no there's no cash coming from 
your, your labor, right? So right. now it will be your money, y'all money. How are we going to spend X, Y, and Z and the trips and everything else that comes, comes along <laughs> with this. So it kind of, kind of turns into a little game after you've seen some continuous successes, but literally that comes from you staying the course and pushing forward and not allowing anybody to keep you from your God given this destiny. And unfortunately, but also that means your spouse. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions? Drop your questions. Is this good information? If it is good information, drop a G in the comments. So we know that we're given value and this is helping somebody in some way, some shape or some form. Mm -hmm. All right. Drop a G for me. If we are given good value, um, with this information, um, kind of a follow up to, the two previous questions that were just asked. Okay. Um, I think, I mean, you, the way you answer kind of, kind of, it's kind of broad, so it covers a lot. But um, someone asked how they can get their partner on board with them and their business. Um, I guess after a while, maybe, but then let, let's look at early on. Is there a way that we can actually get them on board? Um, to you know have that passion have that enthusiasm for our business like we do honestly i don't think that there is a way because again because the vision was given to you because you're going to be super passionate about your thing in this case your business right yeah. because you can already see your vision you can see how well it's going to go how much is going to flourish the the possibilities are placed within you so besides the fact of staying the course, right? You can, how, how I actually did it is I would ask my then boyfriend, now husband questions. Mm -hmm. So just ask him questions or her, ask them questions. What are their thoughts on something which now makes them a part of it? They're still not gonna be deep into it as you. Right. And, and, and another thing I wanna point out is don't take it personally. What, mm -hmm. what am I speaking about? How they answer what their answer is. Your objective is not really so much to um, make them a believer in your thing. Your objective is to allow them to see that you are staying the course, mm. but also I'm gonna try to get you invested in this. Right. One question at a time, right? Because if you have, if you have an idea, excuse me, if you have a problem, Right. And then they give you an idea. Now you can go back and say, hey, I tried your idea. It worked or or, or it failed. Right. But of course, right. you want to go back and really tell them when it worked, because now they're like, oh, OK, kind of look. But trust me, sis, <laughs> bruh, trust me, your partner, your spouse is absolutely watching. And they're really trying to see how invested you are. And one of the reasons why I bring this up is because I was, I was coaching um, one young lady. And her spouse didn't really believe so much in her uh, venture this time around. But right. I, but digging a little bit more, I found that it was becoming and jumping and jumping and jumping. So she's never mm -hmm. stayed the course on anything. So you have to be a believer in your idea and stay the course. Three months, six months, even one year is not long enough to see if your vision is, is going to come um, into fruition. It literally takes years for people's vision to come to pass so if you want to see this thing work and especially be fruitful i.e bringing in finances right then you have to stay the course for several years at a time a couple months just is not going to do it wow 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 all righty hi farida thank you so much for joining good night all right so Another question that came in was if if you keep losing friendships as a mm -hmm. as your mindset changes, does that mean that you're focused you're focused on the wrong thing, meaning whatever business venture that you're on? And you know, how do you deal with that, especially like the loss of friendship kind of thing? Okay, so it could be that you are focused on the wrong thing. Right. But by and large, it usually means that you are outgrowing your friendship. 
with the person because when you become an entrepreneur, right? Actually, let me back up. M most people are parents, right? So when I specifically became a parent, I came from a group of single women. So what I noticed is that as soon as I became a parent, I didn't get the phone calls no more. I didn't get the, the, the you know, the, the phone calls literally went away, but it was mainly because we would hang out and go out to the club X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And now I'm okay. this new mom. Right. And so right. even, even when we would hang out, we were still doing something. So now I'm this mom, the only one in the pack, mind you, that now has a, I was, he was my fiance at the time and now child. So our life is just completely different. And our life paths at the point is just completely different. And so that is the same thing that happens in business, right? Because right. now we're talking a different language, going back to the child. We're, we're speaking different languages because I'm talking about losing sleep and you talking about how many men hit on you, right? <laughs> I'm right, talking right. about bottles and, and breastfeeding. It, it's just the, the language is completely different. The lanes right. are now completely different. And so when you're for Nor, you have these friendships where there's little to no connection because you are talking a foreign language to them. And to be quite frank, as an entrepreneur, <laughs> the, the conversations that you used to have don't really, yes. they don't really interest you like they once <laughs> did because now yes. you're, you're thinking completely different. You're yes. trying to build an empire and you're trying to grow in a different way. And so you might even be listening to different things, meaning, um, cutting off the radio because now you want to listen to self-help books, right? You're trying to get mm -hmm. your marketing down. So now I'm listening to marketing and they talking about <laughs> all of these things that are just not important to you. And so you could be losing friendships because you're look, uh, focusing on the wrong thing, but by and large, it's usually because you're just growing as an entrepreneur. And so what you need to do, and this is what I actually started to do is to surround myself with more entrepreneurial people. So I can talk family, but I can also talk business, business. right? Because we can bounce ideas off of each other as well. So I just started surrounding myself with more entrepreneurial people that also have children because that's the life that I'm in. <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't, I, me personally, I don't want to just build a business. Right. And I don't want to just have business friendships. And I also do not just want to have um, uh, parent friendships. I want to be mm -hmm. able to mi mix and mingle all that stuff together. So you just have to be more intentional about the people that you bring into your circle. All right. That that makes a lot of sense because um, you as we grow as business people, of course, our mentality changes and our mm -hmm. conversation changes mm -hmm. and I mean, when you have, like you said, you know, when it was, we're going to meet up here and there and do this and that. Now it's like, um, what's the latest self-help book you've read? And they're like, huh, what? So no, no, let's, let's go out and, and drink. Let's go out and do. It's like, nah, I got to listen to this um, audio book. I got to, you know, and it's, it's like, oh, so you think you all that now and that kind of thing, but it's really not that. It's just that, like you said, you know, you have outgrown that fear, that sphere, and you know, moving on to something else. So, but but hold, on. I want to back up and, and address what you just mentioned, which is uh, you think you're all that. So mm. I was listening to an interview with Oprah, and she said that she used to take that statement to heart, and it's like, mm. wow, well, I'm. I really don't think I'm all that. I'm just right. doing different things. And now she says she stands in it. Like, yeah, you're right. I am all that, yeah. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> so, so be dope. Stand in your stand in your whatever people say about you. In this right. case, you think you're all that, and <laughs> they will be surprised when you say, you know what? I do think I'm all that. They'll be surprised. Maybe a little taken aback. But the point is, own your stuff. And know that you are all that because you're you're trying to do something different. And most of us, we are the first in our families that are starting to have thriving businesses that are not mom and pop shops. Not to knock those, but most of those mom and pop shops are mom and pop shops because they don't have the systems and procedures right. in place. So they cannot even pass that company down to their children because literally they're working day in and day out. They're even making working more than they did on their nine to five because right. they're all these different roles. So that's just a side note. We're, we're not building mom and pop shops anymore. 
Okay, so I have another question here. That's the person is asking. Um, okay, they're saying, I'm afraid to go to the next level in my business because I know I'm become, I'll become the breadwinner. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I don't think my partner can handle this. How should I proceed or should I just keep it where it is? Okay, so this one is an interesting question, but I have, say, <laughs> I have to say, here's what I have to say. Most women struggle with this, right? Because most of us were brought up in the age where the man is the breadwinner, they're the provider. And, and yeah, it's definitely coming from a woman. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well here, here's what I'll say though. The answer is not an easy one, but it really just depends. So what does it depend on? It depends on you. Literally, it depends on you. You don't have to build a really, really huge business if you don't want to. Like literally the choice is yours. Right. But if you want to, if you're holding back because this is the only reason, meaning that um, you're going to now become the breadwinner. Again, the choice is yours. But is that where God placed you to be? Because you just never know what you're holding back and missing out on by staying complacent for fear. Because literally, that's exactly what this is. Fear of how your spouse, in this case, your husband or, or boyfriend, whatever, is going to now take you being the breadwinner. So you just have to make a decision and then live in that decision and do not punish your spouse for your decision. So if you decide to move forward and make more money and now you're the breadwinner, it literally is about you having more conversations and making him feel um, a part of and inclusive because being the head of the household or the man of the house is not a hundred percent only about the finances. Right. Right. Because most people that's where we put that, which is why we're having so many issues when it comes down to the funds that are being brought into the household. We think that it's literally a hundred percent about the man bringing in the money. It's not, mm -hmm. he can be the man of the household in other ways. And then also, just because I, I look at this this way, my funds is our funds. Right, right, right. So if you don't believe that, if you don't see it that way, then that's your thing. But if you look at it as you're bringing in money for the family, for your household, then there really is no division, right? It just happened, the check, right? The direct deposit happens to have your name on it, but it's for the family. Hmm. Okay, so I have this Facebook user who is a is a man, by the mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. and it's I'm not sure if he's disagreeing. This came in with the breadwinner part mm -hmm. of the conversation, but it would be nice to know what the question is that follows the hmm, um, <laughs> where this is concerned because it's a discussion. There is, I mean, we all have different opinions, and there is always more than one way to look at a situation. Absolutely. So. Um, definitely, we we welcome a question, even mm -hmm. though I know who it is. The person um, didn't click the StreamYard link, so we can't see it on StreamYard, but it shows on Facebook. So um, if there is a question with a breadwinner part is concerned, that would be really good. So we can discuss that as well. OK, I know the person is listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay interesting i'm interested to see if that question is going to come in okay so let me see i have like three more questions if anybody in that is listening have a question please drop your question if you don't want to drop it in the chat send me a message send me a <laughs> private message let me see if i can squeeze your question in because, I mean, relationships, not everybody wants their situation to be public, right? Right. So right. certainly some persons do not feel comfortable asking a question in an open forum, which is perfectly fine. I can totally understand that. That's why we have questions in a list that came in that we are now asking. Right. Right. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me see. How can I make sure I bring my family along with me 
on this journey so we don't end up static or broken up? Ooh. Perfect. Oh, that's a deep question, but a perfect one. Okay, so my answer is not sexy. <laughs> it's not sexy because people think that when they get into relationships and specifically marriages, that everything is just going to fall into place. That how we start is how it's going to end up or at least continue to go. And that's just not true. So just as I mentioned before, you have to be intentional about your friendships. You now have to be intentional about your time with your family. And I mentioned that earlier, but specifically what I'm mentioning here is scheduling your non-negotiable time with your family. This also includes date nights with your spouse because you cannot make it 100% about the family all the time where you two are never being able to connect without right. the child or children being around, right? So you have to be very intentional about scheduling uh, time for your spouse. And so literally, if you think about it this way, just like you schedule and put your doctor's appointments on your calendar, you right. have to do the same thing for your family. That's why I say it's not sexy, but if you want to make sure that you bring in your family alone, then you have to pen, not pencil, because pencil you can erase. You have to <laughs> pin them in on your schedule and show up and keep that appointment and be present, right? So you want to have a date with your husband, but you're super busy. You got this ex uh, extremely large project coming out. A Thursday is date night. So I need to shut it down at a wonderful time so you can go home, get dressed, freshen up, et cetera, so you can be present with your husband or wife, right? Same thing with your children. I'm sure you guys can hear my baby in the background, but same <laughs> thing with your children. You have to be super intentional about the relationships because if you, if listen, listen, if you want to keep your family together, mm. right? just like you are putting time, energy, and effort into building up this business, your family needs to be built up and nurtured as well. So, so for me specifically, as much as I'm working on my business, I will put a timer on with my daughter. It's not sexy at all, but I want to spend time with her doing whatever she wants to do. So I'll put a timer on because I need to stop and do X, Y, and Z, whatever that X, Y, and Z is. And, and right. it doesn't have to always be about business. It literally could be, I need to clean up the house right. or it's time to start winding down for, um, uh, for her bedtime. So whatever right. it is, I put on a timer and I schedule it and I keep it. And I'm really, really hoping that you guys take this one in particular serious because this is how we are able to have relationships with our children later on mm. because you're building the foundation right now. You're also allowing your children to see that they are important and not an afterthought. The same right. thing with your spouse. You have right. to uh, schedule, schedule him in or her in, keep it, be there present and talk this much about business when you're there, because really what you're trying to do is now Stay connected with your spouse. How was his day? How was her day? Right. And ask more deep, intentional questions. So, yes, you can talk about business, but don't make that the focus. Right, right, right. Focus on who's sitting across the table from you. Because we're all evolving. Yes, definitely. So we're taking them along with us. We have to schedule them in and we have to keep our commitments to mm -hmm. that schedule. Yep. Right. Awesome. All right. So he did respond and he said, it's no question. Just don't see how a partner can stop someone from moving to the next level. I just think they get on the bus. <laughs> They'll be left behind. Well, well, Glenn, here's what I'll say to that, Mr. Glenn. <laughs> Men usually don't have a problem with this. Women do. Women usually have a problem with skyrocketing and moving faster then their spouse, because we know <laughs> that the mindset, right? Oh, and that's what it is. Pride. Absolutely. That's exactly where I was going, Glenn. The pride can get in the way. The ego can get in the way. 
And that usually is a man trait. Now, of course, women can have this as well, but that's usually a man trait that gets in the way. And so for the woman to keep everything on an even keel, not to rock the boat in the relationship, she'll stay right where she's at because the man has this pride and ego and he, he wants to be the breadwinner and he don't want to follow the woman and all of these things that are crippling the entire relationship. So she'll just stay right there. Men usually don't have this problem, but women absolutely. But you're right, it is a pride and ego thing for sure. All right, thank you so much for that discussion point, Glenn. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you, Marshawn, for answering, well, addressing that as well. Um, this is another question. I think I missed one. Anyway, um, my partner's, my partner keeps complaining. I have no time for him, <laughs> but I'm trying really hard to make us some money. <laughs> what should I do? I, I think, think I just falls, that. <laughs> I just, I was just about to say, I think that falls right on the heel of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Basically, I mean, you have to make that schedule. You have to give the time right to your spouse to your children you have to you have to it, there is it's not negotiable right there's if no you want to take them along. along yeah there's no other way to bring them along but right. have, every relationship that you have including your friendships your sibling relationships your parental relationships all of those relationships have to be nurtured so why do yes. we think our family is different we think that they're just going to be there because they said I do or they chose you at some point. Well, well, we know that the divorce rate is over 50 percent and it's even higher in the black community. Right. So mm -hmm. we see relationships, specifically marriages, splitting all the time. And that's literally because the relationship that they showed up having in the beginning is not the same relationship. And that literally comes from the lack of communication. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and not nurturing the relationship because we allow life as well as pride and ego to get in the way, as well as all of these other little things. And, and at some point, it just keeps building the distance, keep building the, the, the distance over and over and over again. And before you know it, you no longer know or even like your partner. And it's because you guys stopped having the conversations that you needed to have and maybe even kept sweeping, sweeping a lot of things under the rug. And so now you guys are both tripping over the mountain in your household hmm. because you're, because you stopped addressing, i.e. having uh, the communication, right? When it came down to what was actually happening, what was bothering you, why this thing was bothering you. Because most of the time the, the parties are misunderstanding one another more than it is, um, why they're mad at each other. It's right. usually a misunderstanding. Now, sometimes it's not, I get that, but usually it's a misunderstanding that, that has never been addressed. And because it's never been addressed, now all of these little nitpicky things hmm. are bigger and, bigger and bigger and bigger. Before you know it, nah, I just thought, I don't wanna work on this no more. It's too much, don't care. All right, so we have two more questions and then we'll wrap up. You know, sure. um, If anybody have any questions, drop your questions, comments, concerns, drop them so we can squeeze you in before we finish. Um, I kind of see a trend with the questions and I'm gonna tell you after this one, um, it says, as I'm starting to grow my business, I can see and hear snide remarks from my mm -hmm. spouse. Does that mean he's jealous? If so, what can I do to lessen this? Now, I think based on what the conversation has been so far is inclusion. Mm -hmm. You need to include them to some level and also you know, have that designated time where you spend time. Because it could be a case where they, they feel neglected mm -hmm. but absolutely it just comes out like you know they're not happy for you it's not that they're not happy for you but if you're spending all your time here then what about me <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. oh absolutely that's exactly i'm not gonna say 100 percent, but i will say that that is a higher percentage of why the spouse is not on board as i mentioned earlier it could be the funds as well right the mm -hmm. food labor are not producing the funds right but also like you said the neglect that your spouse is feeling right. and ladies please hear me hear me on this men feel neglected just like we do 
Yes, they Men do. feel neglected just like we do. Yes, they right? do. So <laughs> again, if you don't get nothing from this conversation today, do the non-sexy stuff to keep a beautiful relationship as well as thriving business. So you can be a public success and not be a private failure, right? <laughs> so you wanna be a, a um, success on both ends. And the way to do that, as I mentioned before, is to make it a non-negotiable, schedule it, have the tough conversations that you know that you need to have, whether it's about the business, whether it's about the relationship, whether it's about the children, whatever the tough conversation is, have it so you can move forward. So you're not building up resentment toward one another, right? So the jealousy, as you just mentioned, literally could come from him or her feeling neglected for sure. Right. And when you are together, you're not asking about him and her, right? <laughs> you're, you're talking about this business the entire time. And it can be overwhelming. And, I, and, and, and at some point, your spouse just no longer wants to hear about it because you're never asking about him or about her. It's all about your business or your next venture. Yes, Glenn, I, know, I understand. I understand, Glenn. <laughs> yes, we do feel neglected. Please understand that men feel neglected just like yes. we do. Yes. We voice it more. We voice it more. But those snide remarks can totally be I, maybe he doesn't want you to succeed because if you do, again, this is a mindset thing before I say it, because if you do, now you're going to lead me. You're going to get an upgrade. Mm. It could be a mindset thing, but also that is coming from you not including your partner into you growing, your growth. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So this last question is it yes it's a question okay <laughs> um no one ever talks about how hard building a business is oh my goodness no one ever talks about what <laughs> what isn't anybody talking about it anyway <laughs> anyway let, let me ask the question the person asked um how can i explain this to my partner when our communication is not that great and this seems like a sore subject in our lives Mm -hmm. So how can you explain it to your partner when it seems like a sore subject in your lives about how hard it is to build a business? So right. it, it literally. OK, so most of us fear the things that we don't understand. Right. Mm -hmm. The things that we don't understand. So if there is a way that you could break it down. As much as possible in plain English. Right. Because you don't want to be talking over your spouse's head <laughs> in plain English. Break down that these are the the the. I guess maybe, let's just say the top three to five things that you need to do to build a business. Right. And then, of course, underneath there, there are some subsets. But if you can give them a bird's eye view of I need to put X, Y and Z, these three, these five things in order for me to start being able to bring in some funds. Right. Just giving them a bird's eye view of what it takes to build a business, which is why you're giving so much time and energy which is why you're on your phone all the time or on your computer or in this business meeting etc right because most businesses in the beginning are in the negative yes and, and unless you are one of them that's just doing it you're really the funds that you are bringing in you're usually putting back into the business right so there is no uh no capital right <laughs> there there is no fun where you just have all of this money just sitting in there because you're usually putting everything that you bring in back into the business in order to get to the next step. So if, if, if there's a diagram, right, if, if your if your spouse is an actual reader or again, you can read it, give them the cliff notes, just some type of understanding so they can see some people are visual. So maybe you can literally draw the diagram. Right. Figure out how your spouse learns and then give it the information to him or her in that manner. So it could be something audio, audio right, visual. Right. Mm -hmm. Whatever. However, your spouse learns. Give that information to them in that way. And then again, just to continue to talk about what you're doing, how you're doing it. Yes, it's taking me uh, more time because it usually takes you way more time than you think it's going to take you. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. I see your eyes. <laughs> don't, don't we know that. <laughs> right. It takes you way more time than you even think it's going to take you to yes. get this thing off the ground which is why um, 
I can't remember the percentage right now, but the first year business, most most businesses fail. I just can't remember the percentage right now. And then each year after that, the percentage goes higher and higher because most businesses do not make it. But I think that a lot of that does come from us just not knowing what to do, how to do it, but also that, that partner um, portion as well. I also read somewhere that the average business don't start even breaking even before three to five year mark. About so right. for the first three years, you may not even be breaking even. Mm -hmm. But if you are, that's just it. There's no profit. So right, I mean, exactly. You know. Breaking even, but still <laughs> nothing. You can't pay yourself, <laughs> even even though you really should. But that's a different conversation. Totally different conversation. Different conversation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we all should be paying ourselves whether you bring us something home or not. But again, different conversation. We're not gonna go down that road. But um, but yeah, but 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 most of most of it has to do with us not including our spouses or partners into the next step. And so, and, and also let me go back to you not taking it personally, right? Mm -hmm. Because he or she does want to hear about your thing, at least in small bits. Don't fire hose them because they're, right. they might not be the entrepreneur. Don't fire hose them, fire hose your friends that are entrepreneurs. They understand the lingo, right? And sometimes we don't want to say for fear of looking stupid, crazy, we don't want to say, what is that? I don't understand that. Right. And with our spouses, I'm the people that I coach. Sometimes they don't want to open up to their spouses on particular things. And we just have to get out and just walk through the door and keep giving bits and pieces of information, bits and pieces of information so they can feel included in the conversation as well as the growth of the business. Because like I mentioned, well, I didn't mention it. Sorry. It only takes one idea to take your business from here to here. Right. One idea. Right. That I idea may not come from you. It may come from your spouse. Mm. Might not come from you. Right. You might be the person that's going to implement it. Sure. Mm. But the idea wasn't yours. Right. You just happen to go do something with it. All right. Um. Thank you so much, Marshawn. This has been a great conversation. Um, if you are watching us, if you have a question, drop it in quickly because we are wrapping up. Marshawn, you have an event coming up this week. Please share some information on it. While you do that, I will drop the link in the comments so persons can um, take a look at it and register as well. Perfect. So I do have an event coming up in two days on Thursday. It is a free online training for all of my ladies. Sorry, gentlemen, just for the ladies who are <laughs> married in a long term relationship or engaged. Right. Because sometimes we really don't know how we can transform our relationships around. And so literally it's transforming your marriage starts with you. Because most people think, as, as Anisha mentioned in the beginning, that we're pointing the finger at our spouse. And we don't realize that we have the power to change the trajectory of our relationships around by implementing small, uh, uh, small steps, small strategies. Right. So I am literally having that conversation this Thursday um, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, Anisha is going to drop the link. Uh, I'm super excited. I'm ready to share with you the five ways to improve your relationship without your spouse that does not mean you're leaving your spouse behind it's just again the work starts with you it's not both of you together the work starts with you so i am excited to share those five ways to improve your marriage i look forward to seeing some of you ladies there for sure okay glenn is not impressed that it's only for ladies i'm just letting you know that it's you know okay that. it's okay and he's like he, this is what he's saying okay right, i'm gonna sneak so. in really clear <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much um saren um thank you. okay so thursday's coming up now before you go um mm -hmm. there's this little book a little book the, the little one book. that's behind you Right? Oh, yes. We really <laughs> couldn't leave without touching on that book. That book is just wow. That's all I can say about that book. <laughs> I am going to drop the link for that book, but just tell us a little bit about that book, which is actually an Amazon best 
Sella. It is. <laughs> and, I mean, it is. It is super, 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 super awesome. That little, little, little book. So tell us about it. Okay, so the book that's behind me, 50 Reasons I Fell in Love With You, is a book where men and women can purchase it. Okay, Glenn? So th this one, you're included in this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fill in the blank book where you talk about, um, you, excuse me, you fill in the blanks and you walk down memory lane as to why you fell in love with your partner in the first place. And so it's 50 reasons I fell in love with you, right? Walk your spouse down memory lane. This is a way to build the intimacy within your relationship. I have uh, over 475 reviews on this book. It, it is an Amazon bestseller. So yes, go ahead and pick that book up. It's, listen, it's very easy peasy. So it's it's very it's it, ugh, it's good for anniversaries, birthdays, just because, right? People that you know that are engaged. If you want to gift it to someone else to fill it out. So yes, that book is very easy peasy. And um, yeah, I'm super excited. I'm glad that you brought that up. So thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I will definitely drop the link for that book so they can check it out on Amazon. Do you have any closing words for us? I know you're we're kind of infringing on your, your mommy daughter time. So um, I want us to definitely wrap up so um, you can go and attend to your, to your baby girl. Yes, um, some closing words, literally. I know that you're trying to build your empire. One day at a time, literally, the gift, the vision was given to you. So walk in your purpose. Even if your spouse is not on board today, even if your spouse is not on board today, continue to be intentional with everything that you do, including the friendships and the people in general that you have in your life and around your family, because it's going to make a difference in how you see things, what your mindset is, and your thought processes are as well. The final plug that I'm gonna put in there is if you do not have a group of people, entrepreneurs that you're around, please get into a mastermind, get into a meetup group, get into something where you can be fed by other like-minded people so you can get and bounce ideas off for sure because it's only, it's only going to help you in the long run. And as, as I mentioned before, somebody can give you one idea that can help scale your business to the next level. One idea. All right, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was definitely a pleasure having you on, on this thank platform. You. And we definitely will be in contact because I know you have some things um, up your sleeves. So as they come <laughs> out, we'll definitely share them with the group so they can stay in contact with you. I will also okay, share perfect. your group because you have a group, um, a relationship you. group. Mm -hmm. I will also share that in my group so persons can check you out. Perfect. All right. Thank you yes. so much for tonight. And all the, all the information that you gave was just fabulous information. So, I mean, you're fabulous. So Thank you. Thank you, Anisha. You're fabulous too, honey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So we will definitely connect. Everybody. Bye.